Hey y'all, hi. So today I'm going to be digging into some House Labs makeup. I bought some pieces of Lady Gaga's makeup from Sephora specifically for review, and most of it I haven't even opened yet. So we'll be discovering it together. This is a highly requested video, and I'm as excited as a person can be about anything at this moment in history. I don't do first impressions very often, but I kind of love a first impressions, not just making them, but actually watching them. Deep dive reviews are all well and good, and they definitely have their very important place on my channel. But I also like watching someone open and experience makeup for the first time, especially when it's kind of like a much touted and iconic line. Products that I'm sort of morbidly curious about, I want to know what they're like. Sometimes watching someone interact with them for the first time can satisfy something that a deep dive review actually doesn't satisfy. So I'm going to try to provide that for you today. If this is your first time to my channel, then welcome. I'm so glad you're here. My name is Hannah. I really love beautiful things, but I try to create beauty content that doesn't encourage overspending. So sometimes that means being brutally honest in my criticism and assessment of formulas. Sometimes it means using the makeup I already have instead of buying new makeup. And sometimes it just means reminding you that new makeup isn't going to give you a new life and reminding myself because for all I've been through, sometimes I forget that too. If you enjoy this, I hope you'll subscribe and now let's go ahead and get into the meat of the video. First things first, there are two products that I've opened and used, and one of them was horrible. And I actually put it on my lips today before I came down here. I prepped my skin a little bit because there aren't base products in this collection. So I put on a little bit of green color corrector, a little bit of concealer, just try to shape up my skin a little bit. And I also put brow gel into my brows, but I haven't filled in my brows and I've powdered a little bit, but that's it. So before I came on camera about 20 minutes ago, I applied this product for the third and final time in my life. This is the PHD hybrid hybrid lip oil, and I got it in the clear shade. It's supposed to be nourishing, plumping, shiny, and I like this kind of thing. I like having simple, clear products that are good for my lips that I enjoy applying and wearing on no makeup days or no makeup makeup days. But this is an unscented product. It also comes in a couple of like very bright kind of popsicle stain colors. It's an unscented product, and the smell and taste to me are truly repulsive. It's probably a chemical smell, and there are probably a lot of makeup products that would have a smell like this if they didn't have scent in them masking it. So in theory, I appreciate what they're trying to do by leaving it unscented, but it's so bad to me that I can't stand it. It smells, unfortunately, kind of biological, like a healing wound or really bad morning breath. Just sick. It just smells sick. And I put it on about 20 minutes ago because I was going to come on camera with it on and be like, I did it for you. This is what it looks like, but I need to take it off right now because I just can't stand it. But when it came time to film, there was somebody mowing their lawn and I had to wait 15 minutes. And I just, during that 15 minutes, I was like, I can't take this anymore. And I took it off. I scrubbed it off. But I'll tell you, it just looks like a clear gloss. I mean, it looks exactly how you would imagine that it would look. It's very shiny, glassy looking. Aesthetically, it's fine. I guess it's not unnourishing. It's not really super actively plumping, but it's not like miserably failing at its claims of nourishing and plumping. It's just that it's miserably failing at like the baseline requirement for a lip product, which is that it not smell and taste like vomit. So that's it for PhD Hybrid Lip Oil. The other product that I've opened and that I've been testing is the brow pencil. It's the House Labs The Edge Precision Brow Pencil, and I got it in the shade Ash Brown. The tip is really teeny tiny, kind of like ABH Brow Wiz, and it claims to have won some kind of award. It's like an award-winning brow pencil. In my experience over the past four or five days, it's fine. Like, it does what you would expect it to do. It does what ABH Brow Wiz does, but I don't really understand why it's award-winning. I don't understand why it's beat out the other pencils exactly like it that do exactly what it does. But maybe the fact that I have no complaints and that it just does exactly what I want it to do all the time is the reason. I've been using Glossier Brow Flick for months and months, so it's been a long time since I used a pencil like this, so maybe I don't have context. I approve of it, that's what I'll say, and I'm going to use it now to fill in my brows, which I have already pasted 
pasted to my face using the Refi Brow Gel. So this is the filled in brow and this one is not filled in. I have been going for kind of a light touch filling in my brows lately, not blocking out the front at all, but kind of leaving the front bare of product. Although my brows are dyed. I dyed them at home about once a month. And at this point, I'd say the dye is about like halfway faded, leaving the front pretty free of product, defining the arch from underneath, and then lengthening the tail a little bit. That's what I've been doing lately. Okay, yeah, it's good. They look good. It's a good brow pencil. I don't know why I was so skeptical. I just feel like there are good brow pencils and there are bad brow pencils, and this is a good one. Yeah, I can confirm that it's good, but I haven't been feeling like it's something to write home about. It's just a good brow pencil, but I am quite happy with how my brows are looking. Also, I remembered just now while I was using it, that I dreamed last night that I used it up after just like two or three days. I dreamed that I went to fill in my brows today and that it was used up and that I sat down to do the review and I was like, I can't believe I used this up in only two or three days. Haven't been sleeping well. Weird dreams, but it does remind me to say that it is quite creamy and it does feel like I'm going through it kind of fast, but I haven't used it up yet. So I can't confirm whether or not the creaminess means that it won't last long as I thought that it would subconsciously based on my dream. What should we do next? I have the tools for are basically a quite bronzed and sculpted classic, fairly monochromatic look, even though there are all of these bright, beautiful colors in this line. When I was shopping for each individual product, I was drawn not to the bright colors. Let's actually dig into this pigment paint, the High HY Power Pigment Paint. And I got it in this beige color, even though it comes in all of these like bright blues and chartreuses and magentas and even though it comes in metallic finishes. I got matte beige because this looks like my dream blush color and I was more excited about using this multi-use product on my cheeks than on my eyelids or anywhere else. But I think I'm going to use it both on my cheeks and on my eyelids and then see what I can do with the pencil, which let me go ahead and open it. Actually, I'm going to swatch this and see what we're dealing with before I make any further plans. Okay, okay. I love the color. I love it. It's basically dead salmon and it feels very creamy and thin. I was worried that it would be thick, that it would kind of be really dry and cracky. Mm, buffed out though, it's looking really orange, at least in my monitor. Mm. All right, I am. I'm going to put it all over my eyelids and then see what I can do to work with the eyeliner pencil that I got to make that into an eye look, basically like two cream products on the lids. Oh, this feels high end. There were a couple of colors in this that allured me and I ended up with Onyx Gold Shimmer. Ooh, ooh, it's it looks more black than I was expecting it to look. I thought that Onyx Gold Shimmer might be kind of a bronze. And you know how I love that bronze eyeliner pencil from Victoria Beckham, the eye cajal. It's like my favorite thing ever. But no, this is actually black. I feel like this isn't the one that I ordered. It's actually black with gold shimmer in it. So it'll definitely work to to define my eyes. I think I might be kind of going for almost like a 60s sculpted black eyeliner now, black shiny eyeliner, eyelids in this kind of matte pale nude. I think that that's kind of what I'm going for. Let's see what we can do. I'll zoom you in actually for the eyes. I'm just squeezing myself out a good bit of this to work with. I appreciate that it doesn't feel separated. It feels really nice. I mean, this pigment stuff feels really nice. Maybe I'm just still traumatized from my experience with uh, the EXA Beauty pigments, but this like it couldn't be more different. I'm going to try with my fingers first. I didn't prime my eyes either, so we're really putting it to the test. It basically just looks like an eyelid primer on me, but I'm not mad at it. I have a vision. Okay, I admit that this color was kind of a weird choice. I still hope that my vision will come together, but what I will say is that this product is very well formulated. I think if I had gotten a color that felt a little more statement on me, I would be really, really even more excited about it because it's doing that thing, that elusive thing when it comes to cream eyeshadows or cream products where it does dry down and set, but it's drying slowly enough that it's giving me time to work with it. And the way that it's drying isn't awkward. The edge isn't setting and becoming firm and impossible to blend. The edge stays 
is blendable right all the way up until the very final point of its setting. So I even feel like I'm getting this edge here that's as it's drying, I'm able to go back and sort of blur and blend it even more with my fingers before it has set completely. And it even feels like I'm able to do that a teeny tiny bit after it has set completely. And it's really making it possible for me to get the shape and the blend that I want. Of course, it's a little bit harder to tell with this pale color how it would be going if the color that I was using had a lot of contrast with my skin. But all signs point to this being a really well-formulated product. I'm going to go in with the eyeliner, kind of go hard, try to use it to create some structure on the upper and lower lash line. Okay, interesting. It is really creamy, maybe not quite as creamy as my favorite, the Victoria Beckham Eye Cajal, but it's, I mean, look what I've been able to do with this eyeliner, right? It glides on and then it stays creamy enough for me to go in with a brush and blend it almost like a liquid eyeshadow. And this is my favorite kind of eyeliner. The color's a little funny. It's like it, it's like it went a little bit green. It's almost like something about the reflect of the gold is giving it a green shift or maybe the black actually does have green tones in it. So it's kind of an interesting color if you're into this kind of thing. It's like a slightly teal black with a gold shift. Very unusual and specific. It's not my exact favorite way for a neutral to lean, like to lean into teal or to lean into green, but I appreciate how kind of special and unusual it feels. And I also like the direction in which the look is going. I feel like what's happening is that the way that I'm feeling is kind of coming out in the eye look. It's like angry, grungy, messed up. I'm going to try to replicate this on the other eye and then keep playing. The danger for me with looks like this that are really just smudged out black eyeliner, although it really, I mean, the color is really revealing itself the more I work with it. It is a really interesting dark teal, like a blackened teal. Anyway, the danger with looks like this is that because I have hooded eyes, it all gets scrunched down too close to my lash line and stays on my lids and then makes my eyes look really small and disappears when I open my eyes, right? So that's why I brought the color so far up onto my lids rather than just smudging it along the lash line so that that smokiness and smudginess, you can still see it when my eyes are open. But it's made it even harder to control the shape. It's made it even messier and smudgier. I'm still into it though. I'm like kind of here for it. I feel like I need to go even harder with the black all around my actual eyes to make this feel even more intentional. And then I'm going to pile on some mascara and see if I've pulled it off basically. I finished it with the e.l.f. Big Mood Mascara mascara because it's a very gunky, sticky, I mean, it's not sticky. It's really thick, gunky, buildable. Obviously, that was what I needed. I feel like I ended up with a much angrier, messier version of the look that I had envisioned. But you know, I am a much angrier, messier version of my usual self right now. So it totally makes sense. And it really did show what the, the products can do, I feel. The pigment, though, got kind of covered up. I'm going to try now to put it on my cheeks and see how it performs as a liquid blush. I think I'm going to tap it on with a brush and just see what happens. I actually kind of like this as a blush for me, a really, really subtle blush to help sculpt the face a little bit without it looking like I actually have a product on because, you know, sometimes even if I use a very light touch just cleaning up my skin, sometimes I can end up really looking blanked out like a ghost. But these days, I've really been enjoying a look where like the lip is on show or just the eyes and where I don't really look like I'm wearing a blush color. But if I leave off blush entirely, I can really look super blanked out. So I, I have kind of been looking for and leaning on products that allow me to sculpt my face a tiny bit, but without adding the look of blush. And this definitely does that. I wish it were a little bit more mauve of a beige so that it wasn't turning so orange on my olive skin, but that is definitely something that's specific. It's an issue that's specific to my undertone. Overall, a good product. And it looks like it dries down a little bit less orange. It's like when you first squeeze it out, it's a very pale color. Blending it out, it looks a little orange. And then when it dries on and sets, it looks like that orange kind of calms down a little bit. Wow, impressive. I'm trying to get the products off of my hand with micellar water and they're really putting up a fight, but they are also removing. So it looks like they have that. Wow, these are well-formulated products. Okay, Joanne. They're doing that thing where they're like resisting the micellar water enough to show me that they're going 
going to last really well on the face, but they're not impossible to remove ever at all, no matter how hard you try, which bodes well for removing my makeup at the end of the day, you know? Something really allured me about these two powder products, which is strange because I haven't used a powder highlighter or blush or bronzer in a really long time. I mean, I haven't like wanted and been into a powder cheek product, I feel like in years. And I definitely haven't purchased one in a really long time. Now, of course, I purchased these specifically for review and even purchasing them for review with my YouTube channel's budget for review, I had a little bit of sticker shock. I think the highlighter is like $40, but wow, the packaging. Oh my gosh, it's really nice. Here's the bronzer or the sculpting powder, I got the lightest shade. And this looks promisingly red toned. It looks promisingly blushy to me. It looks like, fingers crossed, it may not actually go orange on me, which would be really exciting. And here is the Bio Radiant Gel Highlighter. It is in the shade Sunstone, and it too is very, very beautiful to look at. I'm out here getting excited by powder, powder bronzer and powder highlighter, and I'm like, who am I in my life? I want to snatch myself, okay? I want to do the thing. I want to do it. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the Refer 30 brush for the bronzer. It's very fluffy. It will allow me to cover a wide surface area and to get a diffuse application so that I don't go too hard too fast. Because you know, I'm out of practice with this, okay? This, I feel, maybe I'm speaking too soon, but I feel like this is a good color. I, I feel like it's it's not so, I mean, my favorite bronzer is the Kevin Aquan Neo bronzer, and it's because it looks like a blush. This is, it really does not look like that. It's got that kind of brown. It is really looking quite bronze and really quite like a, a sculpting powder or a bronzer, but it seems like it's not making me look orange. Clearly, it's on this side. I like it. It's kind of hard not to go overboard. I'm going to put it on the other side. It's also not looking powdery or cakey. It's giving me a very like my real skin finish and I am not wearing very much base today. I just didn't feel like dealing with like a caked on layer of makeup. So, you know, you can see my, the texture and scars on my skin kind of through it. And it's like working with that, you know? I'm going to put a little bit more on out here just because we're testing it, right? And I really want to build up the color. Oh, and you know what else I'm going to do? I'm going to take a little bit of more targeted fluffy brush, which is from the Sigma X Samantha collection. I actually really love the brushes that Samantha created with Sigma. And I'm going to pull it into the eyes to make it look cohesive. That's the difference, right? This is the side that has the bronzer applied basically all over the outer half of my eye look. I'm like using the bronzer to blend the eye look into my skin and into my cheek, and I haven't done it on this side. So you can see there's this sort of like white, this like harsh white line around the edge of the eye, and then the bronzer starts. And I just feel like this side looks so much more glamorous and natural and effortless. This is my biggest trick when using powder cheek products. Some And sometimes creams, but it's a little harder to do with creams because you have to do your cheeks first or you have to be using the cream product on the eyes. I am going to clean up just a little bit. These scars tend to pop through when I go too hard with powder products on the sides of my face and it makes it look dirty, but it's pretty easy to clean up. I'm just using the NARS spot concealer. Okay, an imperfect application because it's definitely like for testing purposes. You know what I mean? I was trying to see how far I could push it. But let's see what happens when we put the highlighter on top. But I really want to swatch it. Oh, interesting. It's not swatching very thickly. I don't know if you can see that, but it's sort of like a, it is kind of like a light semi sheer finish. Very promising. The way that it swatches, the way that it picked up on my finger makes me feel like it's going to be one of those products that disappears at certain angles and then only flashes when it catches the light, which is my favorite. If I'm going to wear a powder highlighter, that's basically what I need it to be like. So let's see. Oh yeah. It's really nice, y'all. I don't know what to tell you. Maybe I'm not being critical enough because again, I'm all sort of discombobulated and also I haven't used products like this in a long time. But here's the thing. I haven't used products like this in a long time because I don't like the way that they lie on the skin. I don't like how cakey they are. And this is not doing any of the things that I dislike in powder products. It is shearing out and looking wet and basically looking like a liquid product or a cream product on top 
top of what's underneath it and allowing what's underneath it to make its presence known. It definitely feels a little bit more like old school beauty guru than what I tend to do these days with my makeup. But this is what I wanted out of these products when I was picking them, when I was choosing what I was going to review. I'm bringing it up onto the eye look, onto my brow bone. And again, it's like it's shearing out. I feel like I'm putting a layer of wet look cream highlighter on top of everything that's there. But because it's a powder, it's not disturbing what's underneath it. And I'm really living. It's still looking a little muddy here because I put so much bronzer on. And because, you know, I didn't start with a fully concealed complexion or with foundation or anything, right? But this product has really sold itself to me. I sort of thought we'd never see the day where I would review another powder highlight. And now we're not only seeing that day, we're seeing a day where I'm like liking it. All right. And we're definitely getting the like summery cheek, glowy, bronzy, summery cheek that I was after with this on top of the angry eyes. Unfortunately for me in this moment, the lip that I picked is a red. I was expecting to stay much more minimal on the eyes and really go hard on the cheeks and then have the red be the statement. With this look, the eyes are already the statement. So I think overall it's going to be kind of a lot, but I'm still going to test it. We'll see how much I can blot it, right? So this is the Le Monster Lip Crayon in current matte. It looked like kind of a bricky off red in the swatches on the website, and I love that kind of red. Oh, and yeah, it does seem to have sort of a soft, sort of waxy, semi-sheer quality that really gives me hope that I can make it work with this look. Yeah, and look how it's buffing out. Oh my gosh, I might really like this too. Lady Gaga is coming for my wig. I just dropped the cap on the floor, but I'm just going to leave it there. Wow, I really, really like the formulation of this. It's very thin, like it went on really thin and lightweight. It has that kind of pigment level that makes it really easy to work with, nearly impossible to mess up. But it's no tinted chapstick. As you can see, you know, it's a lipstick. The color is strong. It's just the way that it's dispersing the pigment, how thin, how lightweight it is, is so easy to blur. It's really becoming one with the skin of my lips. I feel like if I haven't, if I hadn't overlined slightly on my top lip, it might do that thing if it were a more natural color or it would so become one with the skin of my lips that it would really truly look like my lips were actually that color. Wow, this just puts the cherry on top of an incredibly favorable set of impressions, which really surprised me because the two products that I tried before I sat down to film this first impressions, the lip oil and the brow pencil. The lip oil, you know, was horrible to me and the pencil worked really well, but didn't wow me. I did end up with a kind of vintage-y look. When I added the red lip, it really took me there. Okay, let's go through the products one by one, and I'll give you my impressions as I sit here now. The lip oil smells and tastes disgusting. Never going to use it again. Definitely don't recommend it. The brow pencil. Yeah, it works really well. It's in the category of good brow pencils. And I didn't mention the color, but I, I like the color. It doesn't look as ashy as I was expecting it to. It actually is like a perfect match for my hair, which has red in it. That may be a drawback if the whole entire line leans kind of warm like this, but it's working for me it's sufficient. The high power pigment paint, which I tested in the shade Dead Salmon. Just kidding. It's called Beige Matte. Dead Salmon is the name of the paint on my wall, and it just looks exactly like that. I am very, very impressed by the formula. I might have stronger feelings about it if I had tried it in a less innocuous color, but I didn't really feel like I would have much use for, like, a metallic purple pigment paint. This I might end up using as a sculpting blush, a liquid blush, and I might even use it for a simple matte eye look again, like the way that my eyes looked when I had just put this down and I hadn't used the eyeliner yet. Mostly, I just appreciate that it's creamy. It gives me time to work with it. It dries down and sets, doesn't do anything weird, isn't separated in the tube. I think that this is $24. That also felt a little expensive to me when I was selecting things for this review, and it's the reason that I only picked one color. It didn't make me want to go out and buy a bunch more colors of it, but I think that that's because this product doesn't fit very well into my routine, into my life, and not because the formula disappointed me in any way, because it didn't. The eyeliner, the formula is 
fantastic. It gave me a lot of leeway for working with it. It was really quite impressively smudgeable and blendable, especially for something that's not really marketed as an eye coal or an eye cajal, but just as an eyeliner. I mean, I did all this with it. As you can see, the color Onyx Gold Shimmer leans a little bit strangely teal when you blend it out. That might also be the way that it was interacting with the beige product that was on my lids, but I feel like I even saw it on the back of my hand where I had just swatched it by itself. All in all, if I were on the hunt for a specific eyeliner color to add to my collection and I wanted to make sure that I found it in a good formula, if I found it in the House Labs lineup, I wouldn't hesitate. I feel like I definitely trust this formula. I think that they did a good job with it. Let's talk about the powder cheek products. The thing that really excites me about the sculpting powder is its truly neutral color. It's so difficult to make a bronzer that doesn't go orange on me. Even the beige pigment paint went orange on me, but this somehow really held its own. And the worst thing that happened to it color-wise was that when I built it up and built it up like four or five, six layers when I was going in over my eyes, it started to get a little bit muddy brown on my cheeks, but not orange. And the formula is great. It does feel actually kind of creamy to touch, which probably explains why it wasn't looking at all cakey or powdery on my skin. And that's another reason that I got along with it. Didn't quite blow me away, but it definitely got closer to my heart than the other products I've talked about so far, as much as I appreciated them. This one is like a cut above them in terms of how much it excited me. But the highlighter, or what they're calling the Bio Radiant Gel Powder Highlighter, did blow me away. It's because it looks wet, you know? It feel, it does have that sort of gel feel, and I just appreciate the way that it interacted with the things that I put it on top of in a non-powdery way. And then the lip product is the second thing I would say that legitimately blew me away. It feels like it's set. It's become not dry in the way that a liquid lipstick does, but very sturdy and stable feeling. Like I would go eat something right now and I wouldn't worry too much about what it was going to do to my lips unless it was something super greasy. It feels really, it really, really feels like it's become one with the skin of my lips. And I love that in a lip product. I love it when you can't really see the layer of product on the lips, but you just see the lips and you see the color. Of everything that I've tried, I feel like this is the one that has made me kind of want to try another color. I could see myself in the future in a Sephora if I got the chance to swatch them and actually see the way that the nudes and neutrals would look on my skin with my undertones. I could see myself buying this product in a neutral color, sort of a my lips but better for me. I'm going to go. I'm going to leave it there. I've been sitting here trying to come up with some big takeaway, but I feel like there isn't any because this was just a first impressions. And I'm kind of going easy on myself because, you know, like nine tenths of my brain is destroyed by madness, starving, hysterical, naked. And there's only about a tenth of my brain left over to deliver this review. But we did it. We played with Lady Gaga's makeup. We got some first impressions. There were hits. There were misses, actually. And I am going to be following the future career of some of these products in my life with great interest. Keep an eye out for uh, return, reviewing, revisiting my past reviews video because there's definitely one coming up. I'm definitely overdue for that and I'm excited to film it and I'll incorporate some of these products into that. Thank you so much for being here. Goodness gracious, take good care of yourselves. I mean, I know I say this every time, but I feel like it's all we can do right now, okay? So I really mean it <laughs> this time. Take extra, extra good care of yourself so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world. 